you very much and, and good morning. So you may have picked up, I've, I've written a book, The Business Jet Engine, which has a, an online course to go with it. This isn't an explanation of what that material is. It's really the story of how it came about, that the life story, if you like, why I did it, why it mattered to do it, and also in, in the latter stages, the strategic steps, the pieces that had to be in place to actually get there and, and do something like write a book. Why should you care? I'm hoping that you'll find the story interesting. But most of all, some of you may have dreams you're working on that you're trying to fulfill. Some of you may have forgotten your dreams. Some of you may be trying to get strategic plans in place. Some of you may want to. I'm hoping this talk will either re-energise you or inspire you to, to really fulfil the things that you're most keen to do. And also I'm going to be sharing some of the tips and lessons that I've learned along the way. So where did it all start? My first career, I used to be a product designer. I designed all sorts of things from shampoo bottles, beer pumps, high-tech medical machinery. My claim to fame, do you remember when all toothbrushes used to be straight? Any of you old enough? Well, I designed the first ever ergonomically designed wavy handle toothbrush. That's my claim to fame, a global trend in toothbrush design that still continues. But somehow, for me, I was never designing anything I felt really mattered. But let's just track back a bit. Did it really start there? Why did I become a designer? In my preteen years, I loved books like The Lord of the Rings. I loved the idea there were magical tools or weapons that had transformative qualities that could save the day. And I think possibly I got into design because I wanted to produce tools that really made a difference, that could change people's lives or even save the day. So the lesson there is I think you've always got to be true to your earliest dreams. And if you've forgotten what they are, it's worth taking time out to reflect. What is it I used to care about? And am I still living my life according to that? I started to get heavily involved in personal development. Some of you may know the big man, Tony Robbins. I read loads of different books. But for me, the problem as a designer, they were all words. I was either reading books with words on the page, listening to audio cassettes at the time, which were words through speakers, or if I was lucky, seeing people on stage. Again, I was getting words. And I was a designer. I liked products. I liked tools. I liked systems. I wanted to know what to do first, second, and third. So I was quite frustrated with how I was receiving that information. So I started to try and take my design skills and produce better tools. Tried a few different things on the right product I came up with, MindZone Football, which is mental attitude training for kids, trying to get them into this world through the medium of football. I inv invested a lot, and I lost a lot. <laughs> and the lesson there for me was, you've got to be clear what you want and why. I was do doing something I really cared about, so although I failed, I'm really glad I tried. But also, I recognised I didn't really know how to do it yet. And I think that's a key point. If you live with a question, the answer will come, how to achieve something. So for me, it was a very important uh, thing to have tried. Following on from that time, I got involved with a leadership coach in central London, Gil Dove, who had some pretty big-name clients, and I was helping him research, design, and develop his leadership material. And there's an example of one of the, the earlier projects we did, which took a lot of thinking to come up with a simple diagram. There's a very, very complex message behind that, which we express simply. And it was then a natural step with my design skills and the problem-solving process in design to become a coach myself. And I think the lesson there is in life, very little is wasted if nothing is wasted. Skills you learn in one area... I find with most clients, they can transfer and bring something very unique to a new area. So around 2007, it was time to move on from London, and I started working locally. And those who may remember me from that time was under a different brand, and I was offering leadership coaching and personal coaching. A little bit later, I, I rebranded. I thought it was a clearer message. But that question... How do I do something worthwhile? How do I make a tool that counts? What I found, I'd always thought I was going to be working with other people's information. What I found as I established myself locally was I had three very, very good 
unique systems for business, for leadership and for life. And it was time to start asking, how do I turn those into mass market tools? So this was December 2011. Trying to learn from the past and not make the mistakes of mind zone where I put everything on the line and lost everything that was on that line, I decided to have a two-phase plan. The first phase was to build my face-to-face -face coaching to a level where I thought I would have the money and the time still left for phase two to create that mass market product. So I was going to protect my position. So the lesson there, always try and minimise your risk. Always try and protect your current position with something new. Prototype it, test it, don't risk the whole. By 2013-14, remember we'd had a double-dip recession, so it took longer than I'd hoped, I hit that phase one target. The challenge was, what I hadn't anticipated, according to my plans, was I was now working at 100% capacity. I was working flat out. There's a lot more admin than I expected, particularly with some of the funding streams that were around. I needed admin support, but I was also working from a home office, which kept my costs low, but there wasn't space to work face-to-face -face and have that support working for me at the same time. So I had a challenge. The solution, I thought it through in detail, but was to, to find an office, to find admin support. Um, that was going to require additional income, and so I also created a plan to, again, in increase my uh, revenue to, to cater for that. So the lesson there, obviously, think through the steps plan ahead. What do you have to have in place? What's that going to cost and how are you going to accommodate that? What are the staging points along the way? So I found a, a, an office at uh, the very lovely Pashley Farm and there was huge help from uh, Locate East Sussex with the funding for that and also um, a family friend, Molly, was a fantastic way of prototyping the admin role. Um, she was on a gap year, very affordable, and very trusted, safe pair of hands. So you remember that question from 2011, how can I create mass market tools? By now, because I've been living with that question, it was now very clear what I wanted to do. And, and the thing to do was start with the business system and write a book and create an online course. It may seem very clear and obvious now, but way back earlier on, it wasn't clear at all what was the best thing to do. The lesson there is sometimes you've got to focus on progress, taking steps ahead even though you don't know exactly how you're going to do it. Have the end goal in mind and along the way you'll find what you need to do. Now it may take longer as it did in this case. But despite all of that, I found writing a book really hard. Although I'd created that extra time, what I found was that I was getting hours here and there, which is what I'd planned, but I really needed to immerse myself in I needed, needed days at a time to really get absorbed and remember what I'd written last time. And I was still too busy. If you create a space somewhere, how quickly do you fill it? Mm -hmm. So although I'd created space in my week, it was still full of so many other things. I was working with clients, um, very involved in Bexhill Chamber, um, training Molly, uh, sorting the new office. Again, thank you, Chris. Um, at that furniture, I'll give you a 30% discount back, shall I? Yeah, just. <laughs> um, and in no time at all, nine years was up, and we were going to have, nine months was up, and we were going to have to start looking at replacing Molly. So we had to recruit Richard, who thankfully came uh, very ready trained and s stepped straight into role very easily. And the point here is strategic goals cost, growth costs. They're going to cost you in time, in money, and energy that isn't easy to find. If they're easy to find, everybody would be taking leaps and bounds with their strategic goals. So I had to choose what to focus on, how to solve this, even though I thought I'd already put all those plans in place. So how was I going to do that? I made the commitment to start taking out my holiday time. Over 14 months, including two summer holidays... I was going to take my holiday and I spent up to seven hours a day on some of those days writing to achieve some of the major stages of the book, um, including long weekends, bank holidays. In addition, I was going to have to reduce my client base to create extra time during the working week. I was going to have to take a reduction in personal income. And I was also going to have to pay expert to, to take off me some of the tasks that would take me longer so that they could do better and quicker, such as the book cover design, the heavy editing, and the internal layout. 
And by now, it was time to start working to clear deadlines. We had stages laid out, which we had to aim at. Now our path is clearer. I couldn't afford the reduced income indefinitely. <laughs> the lessons there, and I've learned this from hill walking, you've got to accept the valleys. Very often, you're working, walking on a ridge. It's fantastic. You've got the views. And then there's the next ridge you'd like to be on. You have to come all the way back down to the valley floor to go up again at the other side. But it's still progress. You're still making progress. It's part of the journey. So learn to accept the balance. <coughs> so another lesson there, you've got to be flexible in your approach. You may know your route, how you'd like to get there. Be prepared to adapt. And again, solutions will appear if you keep living with the question, how can I solve this? In the background, there was lots of other work going on. We had to do filming for the videos. Richard was heavily involved in video editing and website creation. Uh, we had to learn how to become a, a book publishing company, online publishing, how to list on Amazon. Huge task. Endless rewrites. I thought we would do a draft, flesh it out, and then do one edit and we'd be done. We did endless rewrites to create a book of the standard that we were proud to release. The lessons there, again from hill walking, is you've got to keep going. You might pause, you might rest, but in the end you've got to keep going. And in Nepal, the porters, some of them carry phenomenal weights and they keep going all day where others don't. And the way they do that is they adjust their stride. If they hit a steep bit of hillside, they just take a shorter stride and keep going at the same heart rate. And that's what we had to do to just keep pushing to the end uh, post. And here we are, the first proof off the press. Our first production delivery. And then finally the launch party on the 7th of December. And the lesson from the party is you've got to celebrate your wins. You've got to acknowledge what you've achieved, however large or small. You've got to keep noticing what you've done and recognise and acknowledge to yourself along the way what you've, what you've done. So I hope that is in some way interesting to you. And if you've got a dream or a strategic plan, that you can take some of those lessons and apply them to what you're doing. Thank you.